I want you to keep an eye on this that we glued in as we're going through our examples today. The first thing that we always want to do when we see an absolute value equation is we want to try to get the absolute value on one side of the equation and everything else simplified on the other. So let's take a look at what that means with this absolute value equation. The 2 is with the absolute value. So we need to subtract it. And we end up with 5 is equal to the absolute value of x. So what we're going to do here is we're going to rewrite this. Remember our second step? Rewrite the equation by removing the absolute value bar and adding a plus or minus to the other side. So we're going to rewrite this as positive 5 is equal to x and negative 5 is equal to x. And this one's solved. Why would a positive 5 and a negative 5 both be answers to this? Talk at your table real quick. And bring it back together. Now, this says here to, to determine the two new equations to solve, we've solved it. We don't need to solve them any further because this one's solved. We do need to substitute each solution into the original equation to make sure that there aren't some extraneous solutions or something different. So over here, I want us to write our check. We're going to go back to the original and say 7 is equal to 5, the absolute value of 5 plus 2. And 7 is equal to, sorry, I'm off screen the absolute value of negative 5 plus 2. And we're going to check those and see if they work. When I pull 5 out of the absolute value box, it's still a 5. So 7 is equal to 5 plus 2, and 7 is equal to 7, so that checks. What's true about the absolute value of negative 5? It's also a 5, because absolute value is talking about distance from 0, right? So this is going to also be 7 is equal to 5 plus 2. And that means 7 is equal to 7, and it checks. And I'm just going to do a real quick graph up here at the top to show it. We have negative 7 and positive 7. And we just graph with a point to show that those two places on the graph are our answers. In the interest of space, we're not going to check and graph everything in our examples, but I want you to have an example of how to do it when you're being asked to. Let's try B. What is the value of x in absolute value of 2x minus 3 is equal to 1? Is the absolute value alone on one side of the equation? So we need to just rewrite it now. We're going to do 2x minus 3 is equal to 1. And 2x minus 3 is equal to negative 1. I want to go back to this. Rewrite the equation by removing the absolute value bars and adding a plus or minus sign to the other side. So you're saying whatever the absolute value was equal to, one of them is going to be positive and one of them is going to be negative. And then we're going to simplify it and find out what those two x's are. I'm going to add 3 and I get 2x is equal to 4 x is equal to 2 then. And now we're going to do the same thing to the negative version. Plus 3. I get 2x is equal to 2. 
And if I divide both of those by 2, I'm going to get x is equal to 1. So the solutions are x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 1. So again, quick number line, 0, 1, 2. We're not drawing arrows, we're just saying those two numbers would make this inequality true. Let's do C. What is the absolute value of x in 3 times the absolute value of x plus 6 plus 8 is equal to 5? We need to get that absolute value by itself. Right now it's being multiplied by 3 and it's being added to 8. So let's start with the 8 and we're going to use inverse operations to get rid of it. And so we're going to start by subtracting 8 from both sides. We're left with absolute value being multiplied by 3, x plus 6 is equal to negative 3. We need to get the absolute value alone, and right now it's being multiplied by 3, so we're going to divide by 3. Divide by three. That's going to leave the absolute value of x plus 6 on the left side and a negative 1 on the right, because negative 3 divided by positive 3 gives us negative 1. I've run out of room going down, so I'm going to write them to the right. So now I'm going to take that absolute value away and say x plus 6 is equal to negative 1, and x plus 6 is equal to positive 1. As soon as the absolute value is by itself, we rewrite it with the opposite but this time we had a negative over there, so we're going to do a positive version of it. Make sense? We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. And then the first one we get x is equal to negative 7. And on the right we end up with x is equal to negative 5. 